Uh, I'm Gopal. I'm from MTG, Barcelona. Uh, one of the important aspects that kept coming back in the discussions of past few days is intonation. Uh, I'll be presenting a methodology based on uh, histogram parameterization for computational analysis of intonation in Indian art music. So uh, this, is, this is a brief outline. I'll start with the definition of intonation that I, I took into consideration and the purpose of this work and present my work. The most general definition which uh, fits most traditions is that intonation is the pitches used by performer in a given performance. But in order to develop uh, a computational analysis for Indian art music, my definition needs to be more specific. So in our context, I consider it to be pitch variations within a swara. So in order to demonstrate, Vignesh has sung uh, two swaras, a swara and two different ragas. But no, this is the sound, maximum sound. Oh, okay. Yeah, there is no volume knob here, so yeah. Okay, uh, before we have that, so uh, yeah, we'll see the example. But these are the relevant references uh, that exist till now in, that concern intonation and tuning. Uh, the major work which, uh, which prompted me to start uh, intonation analysis is done by Levi uh, for Hindustani music, in which he shows that intonation is uh, very characteristic to the usage of gamaka. Uh, and uh, a similar analysis recently was done by Swati and others in 2009. And uh, another master's thesis uses uh, intonation profile for distinguishing ragas in Hindustani music. OK, I'll try. So in this example, uh, look at the ga, how it is intonated in the darbar raga and naiki raga. I'll play it again. Okay, so uh, as we see the, in the first raga it was hit upon and in the second raga it was more uh, like a plain, plain intonation. So uh, in order to uh, see why we are doing it, we need to like uh, see like where does it fit in the whole picture. Uh, intonation as we know is a characteristic of raga and to an extent uh, on artist. So uh, and so for the comp music browser, we will be using intonation profile uh, to develop similarity measures related to at least two, these, two, two of these musical facets. And uh, so th the results of this work, when integrated, will, would appear there, like in the audio analysis and discover tabs. To further place it in the global context of the work we are doing, uh, so these are the four important show, sources of information uh, that, that uh, contribute to the browser. Melodic analysis, rhythmic, and metadata and web data. And intonation profile is part of the melodic analysis. The, the, uh, there is a very good amount of uh, manual intervention in the previous works done by Levi and Swati. 
the purpose of this work is to obtain uh, a compact representation of intonation. So, given two swaras, like two two uh, distributions of swaras in two different ragas, like Bhairavi and Mukhari, they have the same swara there, but the shape of the swara uh, is distinct. So, we want to use this as the intonation profile of the swara. This is uh, an overview of the method. Given the audio sample, we segment it to keep just the vocal segments and extract pitch, pitch using uh, predominant melody extraction. And then we arrive at a tonic normalized histogram and uh, pick out the peaks and uh, parameterize the distributions. So we'll go through each of these steps. So uh, in, in the work done by Levi and also as rightly pointed by uh, the Carnatic music expert, this intonation is also characteristic of artist besides raga. So we want to uh, do and benefit from this analysis in future. So we just stick to vocal performance in order to avoid the influences from uh, like keep the variables minimum. If I include violin, veena, and others, there will I mean it, it will be difficult to process. I mean see the influence of uh, the artist per se. So we stick to vocal vocal performances and besides that. Uh, even in these vocal performances, we, we keep just those portions where the vocalist is heard. In order to do so, we train a support vector machine uh, to distinguish between primarily three, three segment classes, which are vocal, whether it is solo or a mix with other uh, accompanying instruments, uh, and violin and percussion. And it performs decently uh, with 96% accuracy on 300 minutes of audio data in a tenfold cross-validation test. Um, okay, the next step would be pitch extraction. But ev even after doing the segmentation, we have uh, like uh, adjoining these vocal portions two or three seconds of violin uh, like lag, lag with a lag. So uh, the a monophonic pitch extraction algorithm would ca track them and 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 is also very very much prone to uh, octave errors because it keeps tracking intermittently the violin and voice. So uh, yeah, we, we, we found that a predominant melody extraction algorithm would solve both these problems. But however, we uh, ended up using a combination of both because uh, yeah, that, that comes as an answer in uh, histogram analysis. Uh, the intonation differences that are reported by Levi, which he has manually done it, are uh, 10 to 15 cents uh, between artists. So in order to see uh, that resolution, we need to have a very fine bin resolution in our histogram analysis. To do that, uh, so our, our pitch extraction algorithm should have uh, very, I mean, it should not quantize the pitches, but the predominant melody extraction which we use, the implementation itself has an inherent quantization step. So uh, what we did is to compute uh, pitch using both the algorithms at each frame and keep the octave information from uh, predominant melody extraction and the pitch value from in. So in that way, we have both of them. And uh, the histogram is calculated using a usual method. And yeah, and the one, one more important thing is uh, now that we have a very fine bin resolution, the peak picking algorithm will go crazy and pick up all these spurious peaks. And for that, uh, we, uh, we, 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 we took up an average histogram case. like. So for each raga, we calculate a average histogram of all the performances and uh, smooth it and pick the, pick the peaks from it with a stricter uh, parameters. So that peaks uh, only the prominent peaks in the average histogram and uh, leaves of the spurious peaks. So we use these as reference peaks and uh, correct the peaks picked up uh, in the uh, histograms of the individual performances. So now we go through the peak detection thing. Uh, each like histogram is uh, smooth using a Gaussian uh, kernel, and a local maxima is labeled as a maxima only if it has two valleys deeper than the depth parameter, and if it is also the maxima in a, a range of bins specified by the uh, like uh, look-ahead parameter. And uh, as I said, for average histogram, DP and LP are set to very high values so that it picks only uh, very relevant peaks. And further to uh, like 
it might skip the peaks which are uh, which have a low amplitude uh, so we added uh, peaks from octave higher and octave lower uh, for all the peaks which are picked up in the reference peaks and we use these reference peaks to correct the peaks from the uh, histogram of a single recording Once uh, we have the peaks, uh, the last step would be to uh, estimate the parameters. So we consider uh, these five parameters which characterize the shape of a distribution. And uh, yeah, the distribution bounds are determined uh, by looking at the valleys. I mean, if they are, uh, if they are more than 50 cents apart, they are bound by 50 cents. Otherwise, they are bound by the valley points. So uh, once we have these parameters, we need to uh, see if they are doing what we intended them, intended them to do. Uh, so we devised a set of like three tasks uh, to see how they are performing. For that, we uh, took a subset of CompMusic Carnatic dataset, which included 16 ragas, 170 recordings, and so on and so. Uh, so in the first two tasks, we took a subset of that. But in the final task, we, we took all those uh, 170 recordings. And uh, yeah, in the first task, what we did is to uh, take three ragas and distinguish them using the parameters of just a single swara. And uh, these ragas, I believe, are Bhairavi, Todi, and Hindolam. And, uh, and, and, the, and in the second task, just to see uh, if the number of classes are too high for uh, two parameters to distinguish, we uh, took out another raga and included Bhairavi and Todi and saw that uh, the difference is significant. So, yeah, there is a consistent incre increase uh, in the uh, like the new parameter that is selected. So, the first mean and height are parameters from the uh, usual histogram analysis, and the all parameters combined it indicates the parameter taken from uh, either skew, uh, kurtosis, or variance. So. In, uh, when we used uh, the, uh, what do we call it, Sub, uh, feature subset, uh, feature subset, I mean, we, we, we pick a subset of features from the uh, available five features and uh, do the second one. So in the second one, either of the three parameters are present. And one of the mean and height are usually present. In the second task, uh, we took two sets of allied ragas. The first set refers by Mukhari, Bhairavi, and Manji, and the second set uh, is of Begada and Kamboji. And uh, here we can see that uh, apart from the distinction between swaras, there is also a kind of octave uh, relevance. So, in the in the first uh, set of allied ragas, if you look at the pa, that is pa and pa caret. Pa caret refers to the higher octave. There is a a pattern. So for all the three paths, uh, there there is a like a triangle pattern, and there is a similar pattern for the uh, upper octave th pass. And similar is the case with Gatri in the uh, second set of allied ragas. So this kind of assures us that uh, we we are in the right direction. And the third uh, set third task is to. Uh, Take few swaras which are common in a uh, good number of ragas and see how they are varying against the global mean of that swara. So the the line, uh, the dotted line is the global mean, and uh, A, B, C, D are Datu, Nitu, Mavan, and Pa swaras, and the raga names are indicated as x-axis. And we can see that uh, the first three figures they vary uh, very, I mean, clearly. In the last figure, just as a uh, sanity test, we included pa. Pa is uh, supposedly to, I mean, it should remain uh, invariant when compared to others for us, and so so it does. So uh, coming back to the browser context, we plan to use this intonation analysis uh, in three major tasks. I mean, for now. So the first one is uh, to as a similarity measure between ragas. And uh, if we, by, this is by checking at the characteristics of the common swaras across ragas. And the second one is to see evolution of ragas. 
So, uh, a raga is said to be a evolutionary phenomenon. I mean, uh, a raga given today is not the same as, same as it is uh, it was 100 years ago. So, based on the composed sections, because the compositions range from like 250 years ago, uh, we plan to do uh, this analysis and see how they evolve over time. And later, this can be uh, added as a another facet of navigation in the browser. Uh, the third task is to uh, use it as a similarity measures between artists and schools or barnies, especially the improvised sections. Yesterday or the day before, uh, Krishna was saying that uh, the composed sections have syllables which determine uh, how the movements go around. But the improvised sections are free from that, and I believe that they more, I mean, characterize more uh, these movements which are specific to the artist or the school. And uh, so, uh, this is also one more important aspect that, that indeed kept coming back uh, in every uh, task we, we are currently analyzing, like motive analysis. So, uh, one thing, one step we plan uh, for to include the, in the current work is to do a swara isolation. So, instead, instead of taking an a aggregate analysis, so if we uh, isolate the pitches that might correspond to the uh, given swara, we might be able to see the contributions of other swaras uh, more clearly. What I mean is, so uh, for example in uh, uh, in Darbar, if I if I want to see how Gatu uh, is sung, and uh, right now I see it in the whole histogram and see one single uh, peak for Gatu. Instead of that. I would want to see multiple peaks uh, of pitches that are supposedly meant to be sung as Gatu in the uh, Darbar performance. But uh, this is not very easy to do. Uh, apart from the motivic analysis, this is one idea that we are uh, intending to do. And I would uh, very much like to hear the drawbacks of this uh, method. So the, the idea is to have a moving window over the pitch contour and uh, I mean yeah I will talk about the details of the moving window later and move it and uh, see the mean frequency of the window and if it is near to the swara which we are considering then consider all the pitches uh, to be taken into consideration for the uh, histogram. So uh, the major factor here is the window uh, windows width and that that needs uh, further analysis of the tempo or the speed of uh, the section and yeah the nature of the section i mean uh, if it is a improvisatory section or composed section or if it is composed in what section are we in so this would uh, i mean this would obviously allow us to see much clearer distributions for each swara and the other approach Com, uh, complem that will complement the uh, current method is pattern analysis. And uh, as a very naive uh, Carnatic listener, I try to pick up few uh, swaras that are common in Bhairavi and Mukari from their performances. And from the face of it, I mean, even for a human, it appears to be a very uh, challenging task to differentiate uh, between them. So. <laughs> This, uh, in this, at least, we would need uh, experts' opinions and experts' adv advices. Yeah, I mean, th these are the ideas that are that normally are there and that are normally used in similar other uh, problems in the literature. But I don't think that will uh, very well work out in this case. <coughs> 